guys, welcome back. So I'm gonna start off the video underneath the mud stain here. I'm gonna pull the vacuum modulator uh, hose off and watch what happens. Maybe I'll try to pinch it. We can make this a little bit more dramatic. See the fluid coming out of there? Watch this. Interesting, interesting. So let's talk about that. Alrighty guys, so I wanted to kind of give you some updates and talk about this car for a little bit and then we're going to work on this thing. Uh, some of you guys probably seen this on the Facebook page for the channel. This is my 2009 Silverado that I got at an auction. So I got this for uh, 4600 bucks. I won the auction for and it just was listed as not running. So I ended up finding that it has a seized engine. So going to pull this out. I do have a new short block for it and pull this out. Put the new one in, put the heads on, and should be good to go. So this is like a 200, 209,000 mile engine. I'm guessing that it had low oil pressure and seized, or there was an oil issue, because the oil in it looks like it's fresh, like very clean, and it has a brand new oil filter on it. So my thought is that it was having some type of uh, oiling issue, or like a DOD system failure, and... Low oil pressure and killed the engine and they were just trying to kind of cover it up or stretch it a little bit longer with a fresh filter and oil change and stuff. So going to work on this. This should probably only take, I don't know, a day or something, but also want to do a teardown video on this thing and actually see what the problem was. So yeah, that's what I'm going to work on tonight, but I want to talk about this a little bit. So I don't think I made a video about it yet, but I did get the brake lights and stuff done. So, got the brake lights in and wired. Uh, I did get a new brake light that's in this box right here for this cracked one. That was cracked when I bought the car, so bought a new light to replace this thing. I didn't wire blinkers or anything yet. Uh, I'll probably work on that one of these days. But, let me show you guys that the brakes, brake lights do work. So that's good. As you guys can probably hear in the uh, first drive video, it was a little bit whiny. It sounded like a supercharger, like a blower whine the whole time. And I believe that was the transmission whining. It was only doing it when I was rolling. Uh, it doesn't do it when it's idling or torque converter running. So I don't think it's pump whine. I think the fluid just either had water in it. Because I never checked it when I bought it. I just took my chance on it. I checked the dipstick hole. It had like dark red fluid on the top. But I think there was probably water settled to the bottom. Coolant or something happened. Or the other thing is maybe... The fluid is getting aerated because the filter was clogged. So cleaned out the pan, flushed it out, put a new filter on, ran it a little bit last night. So I found some old fluid because I, I usually keep all my old fluid and then I take it all in at once when I have a bunch of it. So I had a bunch of jugs of old transmission fluid. So I ran that through, probably ran like five gallons total of fluid through and just drained it out at the cooler in the back side. So I popped the transmission cooler line off, ran it into a bucket, flushed it out, and ran it. When I did the first drive, I also didn't have the vacuum modulator hooked up. So I hooked that up last night, and that's what you saw in the beginning of the video, was transmission fluid coming out of that. And when I first went underneath to do the line for the vacuum, I saw a little droplet of fluid coming out of that. So I took it over to the bench and took it out, took it over to the bench, and put the Mighty Vac on it, like one of those vacuum brake bleeders, and pulled a vacuum on it, like 20 inches, and it held the vacuum. So I didn't think it was leaking. I thought it was kind of strange. So hooked it up, ran the car, it started, idled fine. It's kind of a long story. Started, idled fine, and then did the first flush, went to go do the second flush, and it wouldn't stay running. I actually had to adjust the a throttle stop again to get it to stay running. And I thought that was weird. And when it was running, when I got it to stay running, I started smelling like oil burning out of the exhaust. I shut it off and I could smell oil burn. Like, well, that's freaking weird. So, I never smelt that before at all, even the first time I ran it. So, what I did, because now my theory is that this vacuum line is sucking fluid through it. I went over to this clear line that I hear that I have for the, just for the boost gauge. And sure enough, there's fluid right inside there. You can see the pink, the transmission fluid. So it was definitely sucking fluid through the vacuum modulator. I did order a new one of those. That's gonna be here tomorrow. Yay, Amazon. And uh, clean out those vacuum lines, put the new modulator on there. And then it should be good to go drive it. Today is Thursday. I have an appointment for an alignment on Saturday. Uh, I'm doing it that way because the 
place is a block from my house and I can just drive it there. I was going to like put it on a trailer and then drive it to somewhere that was farther away, but I realized that place does alignments. So going to wait a little bit longer to do that and then next week I should be able to do all of the tuning and hopefully get it to the track by the weekend after that if they're open or we'll just do some street videos. Uh what else did I do since we last talked? I put uh I did do the pool noodles. I found these and uh did did some black pool noodles just for like street driving. I know this isn't really a big safety thing, but um just kind of covered everything up in case you get you know bonk your head on it. It's a little bit softer. Uh I did put one around the flex plate for the gauge. So maybe, I don't know, maybe the tech inspectors will be a little happier about that. So that's about it. That's all I got for, for this pig. Uh, everything is actually running pretty good, aside from when it was sucking the fluid into it and not running. I did start to play with the idle air control in the micro squirt, and that was actually working pretty good. When I originally started it, the idle air control wasn't working because there was a setting in there where like the, the step count was maxed out at 60 and needed to be running at like 150 or something like that. So essentially it wasn't using idle air before. Now I have the idle air control working. Let's start working on this thing. <laughs> 